Hi, this is Nick Fisher with Data Distributing. Today we're going to talk about the Quail Digital Medical Headset System, um, specifically talking about how to set up the system. When one of your sales representatives has shipped you out a box, uh, we want to make sure it's seamless for you. And so we're going to start covering the products themselves. I'll give you a little lay of the land of what's coming in the box, um, how to assemble, and how to easily install. All right, so we're going to go through the steps of setting up the Quail Digital system. Uh, the first step really is to identify the, the base station. A lot of people call it just the white box, that's fine. Um, you also want to make sure you have the right power cord. Um, this is actually going to be shorter than the charger itself, and we'll go over that in a second. Um, basically, the base station needs to be mounted in this way. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that the input-output jacks are facing the sky. And also the power button is facing the bottom. Okay, so we don't want to have the base station once it's plugged in on its back. Uh, we're going to have it in this position and then we'll probably want to place it maybe behind a monitor or something that's going to protect it from being knocked down. Uh, simply just take the power cord and put the jack in and this is going to plug right into an AC outlet. Uh, you don't want to put it in a surge protector, it's actually got to go directly into the wall. Um, once it's positioned this way, you're going to have a shade of green and orange lights. You'll just want to make sure that the silver power button is not pressed by accident, uh, but it has been manufactured at a 10 degree angle where it's not going to be pressed um, again by accident. So once you get that in place, we can move on to step number two. All right, on to the second step. Um, uh, this is the six headset charger. This is where all your uh, headsets are going to be mounted when they're not in use and getting full charges. Um, on the back of it is where you're gonna plug in the power cord. Again, this is gonna have a much longer cord than your base station. So you'll definitely wanna make sure you've got the right cords into the right hardware. Again, simply go to the back Plug this in here and go to another AC outlet in the control room and plug it directly in the wall. The base station and the charger don't necessarily have to be next to each other. They can even be in opposite counters. Um, eventually, once you find a nice place for it, uh, it's going to rest like this. And eventually, in the next step, we'll show you how to put the headsets on the charger. Uh, the third step is actually configuring the headsets themselves. Um, you can take any of the headsets, you can tell that they're actually unattached and that's specifically because when they ship, you don't want to have the batteries on them. They can go into what's called deep battery discharge. Uh, but your sales rep will send you some instructions about that, no worries there. So what we'll do is we'll basically take uh, one of the headsets and the battery Usually I put it in my right hand and you actually have to kind of go over the top, push in and snap. It may take a little practice, but once they snap in, they're ready to go. Uh, you can tell they're working because the light is actually blinking. And what you're going to do is just go down the line, put them all together, and then you'll take a headband and you're just going to snap that right on the back of the battery. That's going to allow you to wear the headset, it's going to be able to swivel, and you can wear it on the left or right ear. Alright, so now that you've got the battery, the headset, and the headband all put together, um, let's just quickly cover how to use the headset itself. Uh, normally you're going to get about 800 to 1000 feet in range as far as walking distance. Um, that always depends on the lead in the walls. Um, as far as battery life, when it's not sitting on the charger, you can expect between seven to eight hours um, before it dies completely. Um, best, best use case is just when you're not using a headset and you're training some of the other staff, just tell them 
to put it into the charger. It's got to be mounted all the way down, not just resting on the top. You want to just carefully push down and you know it's seated correctly when it's at the very bottom of the groove. All right, so the next step is that we're gonna talk a little bit about the charger itself. So once the charger is plugged in, uh, again, to an AC outlet in the control room, um, you should see a red power light on, and that's just indicating that it's ready to go, it's ready for headsets to charge. Um, when the headsets are not being used, it's good to train the staff just to put them back on the charger. Um, they sit right on top here. Um, you definitely wanna make sure that you know they're gentle and when they push them in, they push all the way down. Uh, you don't wanna just stick them on top. You can get like a 50% charge. So you definitely wanna make sure you push down. If it seats all the way down at the bottom of the groove, you know you're good to go. Um, it's normal that some headsets will flash blue and some will be constant blue. If they're constant blue, it means they're at 100% charge. And that's when you're gonna get those seven to eight hours of battery life. If they're blinking in any way, it means they're still charging. They could be at very well at 98% and all of a sudden they're at a full constant blue. All right, we're gonna quickly just cover the headset itself and how to turn it on and off. Uh, you'll notice that there's a silver button. It's kind of triangular. Just press that and you'll notice it's gonna turn constant blue. If that's the case, that means it's communicating with the base station and it's synchronized. By pressing it off, um, this is kind of nice because it can give the control room techs the flexibility of not being heard, but they can listen to everything that's on the channel. So by wearing the headset and not pressing it in, just keeping it off like this, um, that means they can listen to everything that's going in the procedure area, uh, but they cannot be heard. If they need to speak, they can press the button, speak what they need to, and turn it off. Those in the procedure area, of course, would have this on constantly because they cannot be touching a headset with their fingers in a sterile field. You'll notice there is a mic on the back and a mic in the front. Uh, this is picking up your voice. This is the boom mic, and this is actually for noise cancellation. All right. The last thing about the headset is that you'll see there's a little black toggle. This is for volume control. So by going left or right, up or down, is gonna decrease or increase the volume. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, hopefully it helps. Um, your sales representative will definitely give you a call for further assistance, but as you can tell, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but again, if you need some help, definitely call Data Distributing, your sales representative. And again, thank you for watching this video.